Welcome back to the Thrift Store. I'm Dad of Libre Hollywood. How about a budget? All this week, we're celebrating the gnarly 90s. When was the last time you and your pals scattered up a bunch of rugs from your childhood, put them all in a time capsule, and buried it deep in the backyard, never to be opened for decades on end? When Nickelodeon Studios said Universal Orlando Resort first opened on June 7, 1990, a bunch of kids did just that. While this time capsule might not be as visually stimulating as yours or theirs, at least it's mentally stimulating in the fact that it challenges you to remember more than you ever want to know about the 1990s. See how well and how long you've been keeping up. This time capsule is a set of Trivial Pursuit from the most trivial of decades, 1990. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Was purchased for $3.99 from the American Thrift Shop in Passaic, New Jersey. And what the heck is this doing on the top right corner of the box? Oh yes, another most trusted piece of the 1990s. Small in stature, but mighty in meaning. I'll show you that later. But for now, let's unearth this time capsule and see what the hubbub's all about. As always, we give you 10 seconds to read this double-sided instruction pamphlet. And it's a pretty simple instruction pamphlet because this is an extremely simple game. 10 seconds. There you go. This is from Horn Abbott and Hasbro. For two to four players or teams, all adults. After the game, to move along the circular track and the spokes correctly answering questions and to collect colored wedges for correctly answering questions in each of the six category headquarters at the base of each spoke. These are your color-coded categories. Pink is oops, mistakes and mishaps that made the headlines. Yellow, wired, all about technology, gadgets, and the internet. Brown, viewing, which I would definitely excel at. It's all about movies, TV, and things we watched in the 90s. Orange, trends, fluid and fashion. Green, important, real news. And blue, hating, all about what people did in their leisure time. Games, sports, reading, etc. To win! A player or team returns to the hexagonal hub and correctly answers the game when he question in a category chosen by the other players. This requires the game board, which I'll show you momentarily. Question and answer cards in bots, five card holders, one six and ten sided die, four decorated pawns, and twenty-four scoring wedges. We also have here alternative gameplay in this little box. So let's take a look at the contents. We begin with the humongous game board here. How humongous? It's a sex topple flap game board. Pretty cool. So oops, hating, viewing, important, wired, and trends. Those are your color coded categories. I'm going to put viewing front and center because I know I'm gonna excel in this particular category. These are your five card holders. Inside this case, we also have here your spokes, along with the dice. This is your typical six-sided die, and in here, let's see if we can find that ten-sided dice. That's another understated 90s relic. I'll take a look. We have a specialty coffee shop drink, your dot-com portfolio stock certificate. We have here PDA, and your rock god. And he comes unnamed, so you can name him. Pretty neat. But where's that ten-sided dice? There it is! It's wedged in between uh, the space and the holders. So there's your ten-sided die. And now, for the most important component of the entire game. Your questions and answers. And these are categorized even further into specific years within the 1990s. So you know what you're getting into even more. Like for example, from 1998. Now all questions go in this particular order of categories. Oops, wired, veering, trends, important, and hating. Turn around. You got these answers. And by the way, I'm starting to get into Charmed too because my assistant Jeff is getting into Charmed. And so automatically my favorite is Piper. Holly Marie Combs. I got some Twitter history with Holly Marie Combs that I'm actually most definitely proud of. How about another couple more? So this card is from 1994, 
Flip it over. Hmm. Flip this card over first. <laughs> and you get these answers. So I actually got three in one hand. 1995. Both of these cards from 95. Alright, flip this card over. Those are your answers. And flip this card over. Those are your answers. And by the way, TheOnion.com, the absolute best satirical news site on the planet, and The Onion News Network on YouTube, before they moved from uh, New York to L.A., oh, it was just an absolute dream to behold. And I'll be doing more Onion reviews on the channel in the future. I actually have a few Onion books that haven't been uh, looked at. But those are your components, and in a moment, we'll get a better detail on what those specific character pawns are, especially that coffee drink. And speaking of coffee drink, there's a reason why I put that French Central Puck Cup there, folks. Because I just happen to think it fits well with this, and if you thought I was going to do a 1990s video and not cover Friends in some way, you're mistaken. And you might also ask me, well, if you're doing the 90s week, Pete, how come you're not doing the French trivia game that you recently purchased? Because that would be too easy. I know for a fact that there was more to the 90s than just friends. This game is valid evidence of that, and so too is the 1990,000 piece puzzle, which you'll see after this. So for now, let's turn this around and take a look. We lived a decade of grunts, Clinton, and Y2K paranoia. The 90s were an intriguing combination of success, advancement, scandals, and tragedies, and you'll find them all here. Bubba led the country despite the scandals surrounding him. The Cold War came to an end, but the turmoil in the Middle East heated up. TV viewing included outrageous court trials and odd sporting matches. The sky was lit up by the hale Bob Comet, believed to be the biggest, brightest comet in the century. Drinking coffee became an event in itself, with coffee shops serving lattes, cappuccinos, and espressos popping up all over town. And let's not forget that one specific coffee shop in New York, Central Park, served as the hangout for six young, trendy, fashionable, extremely hot, and superbly hilarious New Yorkers. For a show that would last ten seasons, and I don't even know if I'm exaggerating here, changed the face of world culture as we knew it. And no one can forget the wild preparations that happened for the turn of the century. So think back and have fun rediscovering what made the 90s the most trivial of decades. Tokens of the 90s, as I said earlier, a grunge rocker, a PDA, a dot-com stock certificate, and what we know now as a grande bug of half-calf pot skim mochaccino. So that's that. And now they're ready to play here by separating the cards by year and rolling the die to see which year your question will come from. Those are your categories. And all that's left is the Friends Central Park Stress Ball. This stress ball was gifted to me for my birthday by my pal Tony Limbrindisi, who's been working with me as sort of a mental health advocate. That's all I'll say on that. She and I talk a lot about Friends because we hold it in a special place in our hearts. It's in the back here, I'll get it for you now. It's a French stress ball designed in the shape of a Central Puck to go coffee cup. Designed in the UK by Paladon Products Limited, officially licensed by Warner Brothers, and really there's not much to it. It's a Central Puck stress ball, which I'm more than happy to open up now and actually use. Tony did pick this up for four bucks at the Muscles in Kinelon. And when the stress of playing this game and possibly flunking out, if you weren't born in the Sarah gets to you, you can just squeeze on this. And despite its odd shape, well, it doesn't feel any different from a regular stress ball. So, random stuff on the bottom and that's about it. But I'm happy to finally have this. And for four bucks, that's something neat to hate in your Christmas stocking. Twelve months from now. Anyway, the 90s time capsule trivial pursuit gang gets 
Five out of five claps, and you best believe there's going to be some friends content in here. As for the Central Park Stress Cup, I should say. Five out of five, for a total of ten out of ten. I also own the Trivial Pursuit Totally 80s Edition. Not only am I turning up to a new decade, but I'm also making sure that the pursuit of knowledge gets even more harder. And trust me, on behalf of Tony Lynn and myself, there's nothing trivial about that. And Tony Lynn, just as you've been there for me, I'll be there for you. watching TSR. Now, to see another awesome review like this one, click here. If you want to become a Hollywood bargain hunter, click here to subscribe. Now, catch you on the thrift side.